Well, here I am on beautiful Fort Lauderdale Beach, and I've been asked to talk about bridge deck clearance and bridge deck slapping or slamming. And so here's my opinion of that. All catamarans will have bridge deck slapping or slamming in certain sea states and wind conditions. And some have more than others. So the ones with more reserved buoyancy, that is wider, fatter hulls, will tend to float up higher on the waves and not have as much bridge deck slamming. The ones that have very narrow hulls, they have more. And what the manufacturers don't always tell you is that they'll say something like, oh, well, uh, we have 39 inches of bridge deck clearance and uh, it's not really an issue. Well, but yeah, it had 39 inches when it was first launched and, you know, they had minimal fuel in the boat that day, minimal water. They, they hadn't added the generator yet and all these other heavy bits of equipment like sails. And as you add that weight, those narrow hulls have a faster sink rate than the wider hulls. And the bridge deck clearance disappears pretty fast. And this is what causes slamming. And it looks something like this. All right, let's talk about bridge deck clearance between narrow hulled catamarans and wider hulled catamarans. And so we have our speed demon over here. This is the narrow hull version. And then we have fat cat over here with more buoyancy on the right. And as you can see, I'm not a great artist, but <laughs> We got to just work with what we have. All right. So now both of these manufacturers advertise a 39 inch bridge deck clearance, which most people regard as pretty good. But remember, all cats will have hull slapping or hull slamming if it's more severe. You just have to know how to take the waves and be aware that as you add extra equipment, especially heavy things like generators, air conditioning, sails, extra sails, water in the tanks, fuel in the tanks, uh, spare fuel in jerry cans for long voyages, uh, heavier dinghies with uh, four-stroke engines that weigh a lot more than the old two-stroke versions, solar panel arrays, provisions for a longer voyage, uh, crew weight, spare parts, larger battery banks. Well, the catamaran is going to sink down in the water. Now, which one do you think sinks at a faster rate? Well, Speed Demon over here is going to sink much faster as you load that extra equipment on the boat. And so the bridge deck clearance is going to evaporate pretty fast. Okay. And this is what causes problems with these boats. And remember, as you load these things down, no matter whether you're a fat cat or Speed Demon, you're going to slow down, especially this boat. And so you've just lost all of those speed advantages that you thought you had. Okay. And so really, if you, the bottom line here is if you're doing short weekend type cruises, these are just fine. Okay. But if you're living on the boat and, or you're doing long, distance cruising, you really need that extra carrying capacity that a wide hulled boat gives you. And I just think the bottom line here is you got to buy the right boat for the job. And this one here is much more popular, easier to resell. And this is, this is part of the happy owner process. If you want to be happy, you got to buy something that is easy to resell and it does the job for you and there it is so the people trying to sell you one of these boats with 
more narrow hulls that are made in one particular country, I won't mention the name, will say, oh, you can go much faster than those big condo morans. And uh, the, what they don't tell you is that you're really only getting one to two more knots in most conditions that we sail in. Now, I'm not talking about extreme conditions. I'm talking about what you mostly encounter. And so, is it really worth the trade-off to be uncomfortable, to live in maybe half the space that you would get in that so-called condo Moran to gain one or two knots? I don't think so. I mean, you know, when you're on a boat, you're, you can't be in a hurry. You know, if you're in a hurry, take a plane. So, I just think the trade-off is not worth it for what you get. And as a matter of fact, you know, I've been in some catamaran races with uh, about 30 catamarans of uh, all over 40 feet long. And in these races, we saw the big condo Moran, the Lagoon 450, which has been accused of being the condo Moran, clean up, okay? They started way behind me because I was right on the line going fast in my Bali 43 and they passed us to Lourdes. I mean, it's like they're really fast. And, and there was a Katana 65 in that race who I guess they just got it and they didn't really know how to sail it. Well, you know, the other keel boats, the ones without the dagger boards, cleaned up. They killed the Katana. So if you're in a hurry, take a plane, don't go on a boat. <laughs> All right, and so I, I just think that you need to weigh the reality of what you get with one of these narrow-hulled boats. I mean, I've compared it to going camping in a Ferrari, okay? Would you go camping in a Ferrari? I would. So anyhow, if you'd like to discuss this, please uh, give me a call. Um, my website is largecatamaransforsale.com and you can find me there. So, smooth sailing.